Welcome to theCUBE. It's a wonderful Tuesday, and we're here talking to Craig Nunes, who's the VP of Marketing at Datrium. Good to be here. And Good Craig, you guys had an announcement today, and the announcement particularly refers to the further convergence, or the opportunity to further converge, not only hardware, but now increasingly operating environments, specifically right. bringing uh, some of the Red Hat ecosystem over to the Datrium product set. So, why don't you tell us what sure. happened? Well, we've been making a, uh, a, a great business with customers in the VMware environment. Uh, we debuted our uh, kind of new generation of convergence back last year. And uh, as we were uh, um, picking up customers in uh, vSphere, we were running into a number of them who were saying, you know, God, this is awesome. I do have some Linux stuff going on. Um, can, can you guys help me out there? I can't seem to you know, find a uh, modern converged platform to really take on both environments. And, uh, and so that's precisely what we've done. We're uh, announcing today that we've partnered with Red Hat um, to uh, use their stack, Red, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and, and uh, uh, their full Red Hat virtualization uh, stack, run that on uh, our DVX on our compute nodes alongside uh, vSphere servers. Um, beyond that, because uh, uh, we observe there's uh, a lot of uh, activity going on in the container space and uh, Just a little bit. CICD is uh, becoming something that more and more folks are moving to, uh, we've also partnered up with Docker and we're uh, also going to provide bare metal container support with a persistent volume plug in for the platform. So uh, this is all in one go. You now have, really for the first time, a modern converged system that can you know, handle what you're doing today with vSphere, probably handle what you've, uh, you're already involved in, but you're looking for a way to, to bring this stuff together in your, your uh, Red Hat environment. Um, but then more importantly, you're kind of set up for uh, you know, where you're going with containers. So when you say handle, uh, Datrium has made some interesting decisions regarding the, uh, how to solve some of the engineering problems associated with convergence. Yeah, yeah. Um, tell, take us through a little bit about what it means to handle. So sure. what were you doing on VM, uh, VMware, mm -hmm that you're now especially doing yep. on the Red Hat ecosystem and will be doing yep. as you move more closely yep. towards containers. So in the world of converged infrastructure, um, you know, of course we started with kind of packaging convergence with arrays and, and servers and hyperconvergence came along to really bring storage into the x86 architecture. Uh, super cool uh, idea in, in principle. The um, the challenge with that is because storage is now part of your server, everything is stateful, everything's a storage node, and you know it's tougher to scale, it's tougher to service, and and you know uh, taking nothing away from uh, the hyperconverged guys, it's great for single use case, great for edge, but we're really aiming for you know what people are trying to get done in the private cloud data center, and so for that we found that by separating the persistence, the durable capacity from the IO processing on the server. Uh, we could provide this wonderful converged platform that scales, that uh, you can use any server you like, you could bring your blades, you could use our own compute nodes, whatever. Um, and it gives folks just a lot more freedom to get, uh, get the job done. Servers are stateless like they were with your arrays, but have all the benefits that you're desiring with uh, a converged infrastructure. So we brought that to uh, vSphere, and what folks have taken away is, wow, since everything runs local on the server in flash, it's faster than an all-flash array, sure, because there's no SEN. Um, but it's all you know, VM-based, and brings all the simplicity you would expect from a hyper-converged platform only at scale. Mm -hmm. And so uh, and so, what we're doing is, is uh, uh, taking that model to Linux and containers. Now, one relatively new thing we did just recently in addition to you know, taking on kind of VM consolidation acceleration, we built right in all the data management capabilities you would need for 
you know, backup and instant recovery, disaster recovery, um, archive, compliance, search, analytics, um, copy data management, right into the platform. So really the, the virtualization guy, the DevOps guy or gal, whoever is running the um, uh, applications can not only run them, but protect them, share them, uh, et cetera, from one cockpit, one UI. So we're really bringing, you know, taking a whole load of stuff that folks have had to deal with and, and tossing that for you know, one very simple platform that scales as you grow. So you're bringing new services to the basic management console of Datrium and expanding that set of services across exactly. platforms. that's right. So talk to us a little bit about how you see this evolving as the whole world of containers comes on. Because mm -hmm. as you know, yeah. containers means more of them, new security models, right. Uh, today, most communication takes place through the VM. Yeah. Uh, when you start talking about adding the kind of storage flexibility, the data flexibility right. that you guys are providing, it suggests that you've got some new ways of looking yeah. at containers. You're yeah. cooking some Absolutely. new stuff. Absolutely. Talk to yeah. us a little bit about that. Yeah. Here is where you know uh, a, a modern platform really is important. And and again, uh, not to knock hyperconverged, but you know, five or six years ago when that was born, um, it was pretty cool to manage things at a VM level, right? An era of virtualization was hot and heavy. Um, as we move into containers, you know, VMs are just not granular enough, and in fact, uh, folks want to be able to manage at this per container level. Arrays, you know, we're talking about LUNs there. Hyperconverged is going to stop it short at, at VMs, and so what we're bringing folks is a way to manage you know, in the VM side, VMs, VDisks, files that make up VMs, um, individual container persistent volumes, uh, so you can um, uh, protect and share the way you need to. And what we do, because it's kind of a, a, a you know, double-edged sword, you can manage everything at that level, but now you've got thousands and thousands of them. So right. we actually give you an opportunity to group those to what we call protection groups. Think of it as a a policy group, and uh, you set it up around your applications, and uh, you set your policies per group, and through naming conventions, uh, if you uh, uh, spin up a new VM or container, it's going to uh, get included as a part of that group without you having to you know, manually go in and assign it. So we're, we're effectively putting uh, the capabilities in so you can manage tens of thousands of objects um, very simply. And that is the world of containers, right? If you thought there were a lot of VMs, there's a whole lot more in the way of containers that'll be there. Well, one of the things that Daytream has done, correct me if I have this wrong, but I believe I got it right, is one of the things that Daytream has done is they facilitated the kind of any-to-any -any addressability between storage or compute resources and mm -hmm and data resources, right. you know, the various types of nodes that are in there. So you used to have all the data inside a particular server and that kind of created some segmentation along right. those lines. Um, and so in many respects, you created networks of resources that Datrium would manage in that way. Are you doing something similar now as we think about containers where you're literally describing a network of containers as part of that resource mix and being able to add yeah. things to that? Is that effectively what the group becomes? Yeah, the the uh, group of containers is completely independent of the, the, the servers that are hosting them. So uh, you can literally, you know, um, uh, group a collection of containers across all of your uh, Linux servers and uh, and you know treat that in a special way and so you've got great flexibility and um, it's like I say it's something that is really intended uh, to scale we've got some very powerful search tools uh, as a part of that so if you do need to find things quickly and get it rolling um, when it comes to containers you know it's all about you know, speed, keeping keeping up uh, uh, the uh, the pace, and partly what we bring to the party is um, great uh, data reduction capabilities. So when you're doing development in like a, let's pick on a Jenkins uh, development environment, you've got you know master slave, and you are um, uh, collecting data as part of every um, uh, every object. All of that stuff has to move through the master, and the better you are at handling uh, data efficiency, um, 
the, the faster your runtime is going to be. We're observing uh, about a 30% faster runtime for developers uh, in that Jenkins environment. And capacity-wise, we're probably consuming 95% less capacity than you otherwise would have to do in kind of your more traditional storage environment. So 95% it reduced. It is a 20 to one reduction. Because wow. there are so many copies in development right. and you know we, we can dedupe all of that away. So it's fundamentally a breakthrough uh, for guys thinking about development, test, DevOps, uh, et cetera. So you talked about the capacity improvements that you get and the throughput uh, improvements, but as you said, uh, when we start going to containers, we increasingly start thinking about how fast we can add new function, how fast we can bring new capabilities mm -hmm. together. And, and one of the things that we're fascinated about in this world, you tell me if this is a benefit that you see, is uh, that it, it, it dramatically accelerates the entire process mm -hmm. of doing development. Right. Yeah. Uh, four, five, seven, 12 times Absolutely. speed yeah. in the development process. Yeah. So not only do you get better runtime, and do you get uh, dramatically better utilization of resources, but you were also accelerating the productivity of people yeah. that are actually yeah. doing the work. Are you yeah. seeing that as well? Absolutely. There's, in fact, there are two two things going on here. One is, as a part of the platform, when you um, clone a container, um, you know, you do that on your your dev server or whatever. That clone is immediately available to all other servers in the cluster. There is no copying and, and uh, um, moving around. It is immediately available for the developers who just can go. The, um, the other interesting thing is there are, um, uh, in um, uh, development environments, depending on uh, the number of developers and executors involved in development, you can um, have problems uh, maintaining the state that you desire. And so uh, part of what we are doing here with these very efficient cloning capabilities, we can spin up a new uh, environment for folks that is, you know, got pristine state, which means down the line, quality is better and you're right. not going to thrash on those iterations mm -hmm. in your QA cycle. So uh, from, you know, from end to end, it's all faster. Runtime, QA, the whole nine yards. So, uh, Datrium's a relatively new company? We uh, uh, began shipping in February 16. Um, we, uh, we've had a great 2017. In fact, well, uh, it, of course it was great. We had a wonderful uh, fundraising in December 16, uh, one of the largest of last year. And so that's really propelled us uh, uh, in the market. And um, we... Uh, had a wonderful set of announcements uh, just about a quarter ago with the data management capabilities and we added these Datrium uh, compute nodes. And just last quarter alone, um, our installed base, which had been you know, already showing record adoption, grew a whopping 50% in a single quarter. Um, and one of the most interesting statistics- Sequentially that, or year to year? Uh, Sequentially. 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 That is From Q, the end of Q1 to the end of Q2, boom. And uh, not only that, um, one out of every three of our customers already has multiple uh, DVXs deployed. So that's a huge testimony to, you know, they're, they're kind of liking what, they, what they've got. So, uh, yeah, so it's been uh, a sprint. And like I say, uh, we've been very kind of vSphere focused. Uh, uh, our founders are a uh, couple of Diane Green's early principal engineers at, at uh, VMware. Um, but uh, customer demand, customer is king, and they're uh, uh, looking for the same, same kind of capability in their uh, Linux and container environments, so here we are. Hey, speed is important to uh, infrastructure people too. I mean, right on, yeah. So, uh, Craig, Thanks very much for joining us here on theCUBE. Uh, once My again, uh, great to have Datrium talk a little bit about an announcement that they did today about adding uh, the Red Hat environment to what you, the great work you've been doing in VMware and vSphere and the future of how containers and related technology will start getting folded into that whole thing. Yep. Uh, great results, uh, good early start, keep it up. Thank you, all right, see you Peter. I'm Peter Burris, uh, good to have you once again with theCUBE. We've been talking to Datrium about uh, their new announcement. Craig Nunes, or Craig Nunes, 
<laughs> Craig Nunes of uh, Datrium, Vice President of Marketing. Thanks for being here, Craig. My pleasure.